Hi gorgeous! So this is a sneak peek of my day of look. <laughs> today I had, I'm just jumping right into it, today I had a little hair trial with uh, my sister-in-law who got this all in for me and I've left this for um, seven hours now and it's looking pretty good! This, this was more curled but honestly I think it looks just fine with like the curl falling out of it. I think that looks very cute. And I got these braids on top, and they kind of meet in the back. I don't know how well you can see it, but it's very sweet. I love it a lot. Um, we didn't do a full face of makeup today, but we did do, I don't know if you can see, I got my eyes done. It's like a purple palette, because the last time we did a makeup trial, we I forgot my eyeshadow palette, and I really wanted purple, but all they had was pink. So we just kind of had to go with that. So today she just practiced my eyes only, didn't do a full face or anything. But even without a full face on, like, this has stayed just, like, I guess the eye, the eye makeup we did maybe like an hour or so later because we took a break to have lunch and stuff. But it turned out so well and I'm so happy about it. And it's not super visible on this camera, especially because now it's dark outside and the lighting in here is not great. But I think it looks really cute in person and that's what I care about. Currently, I guess I'll care more about pictures when that time comes and this is also like this is gonna be my day of like getting ready to love it. It's like all buttoned up. It's like a whole button up dress So it's easy to take off and like have everything done and then put my dress on afterwards That's the one thing that happened today. I haven't posted a video in like two weeks So I'm trying to remember everything that's happened in the last two weeks. Oh another one that's sort of related I got new glasses. They have like a little purple detailing and they're black um and they're a little bigger and Jake was really hyping me up about these because my old glasses are a little smaller and these are more huge and not what I'm used to and so when I got them I was like second guessing it a lot but Jake was like the ultimate hype man like <laughs> for a week after I got them he would just kind of be talking to me and then he'd just kind of stop and be like those glasses look really good on you and I was like wow you are the best <laughs> thank you so much <laughs> oh I also got I left this on the bed I got a little wifey sweatshirt that I'm gonna wear the day after the wedding so it's cute. It's it's really just like a font on just like a, what's the brand, like Gildan? Like the normal kind of sweatshirt brand that people use. I thought it was going to be like a little more of a, a woman's fit. It's very much a unisex one, which is fine and like it looks good for the most part. The arms I'm not super happy with, but I was like, eh. Like, I, I know it's, it's one of those kind of like, I don't want to say basic, but you know, like it's one of those things where... Like, only a certain few people seem to do it, or people do it for, like, the gram, and they buy this kind of thing. But I was like, well... Because I've, I've avoided kind of, like, the bride and the, like, fiancé shirts, because those are, you know, just a, a moment in time. But wife I'll be, like, you know, hopefully for the rest of my life. So I was like, I could just wear this, and I can wear it the day after we're doing a little, like, gift opening with just our parents at our house. And, like, if other people want to show up, they can, but we're just planning our parents. And so I was like, oh, I can wear it, like, just the day after at the hotel, and if people see me, they'll see that, and they'll be like, oh, that's cute, and I'll get to wear it, like, if my parents, or, her, or his parents take pictures that day, and then I can just wear it around the house after that. I probably won't wear it out in public a whole lot, but it seems like a cozy sweatshirt to have for the winter months. So, yeah, and it's a fall wedding, so I was like, oh, perfect. This will be nice. <laughs> Hopefully it'll, the weather will match. Who knows, because it's still been... Gosh, I forgot that Labor Day, like, the pool was closed after Labor Day, and I sort of forgot about that, because to me, in my head, it's still warm enough that it's summer. So I was planning to bring the kids at work to the pool, and I was like, oh, crap, I missed my opportunity. <laughs> I'm getting a little derailed. Oh, I have a few things I remembered to, I always forget to bring stuff up here to show people, but I remembered this time. I made a candy bouquet, so I'll show that real quick. It's just a little, I just used, like, some ribbon, some tissue paper that I had, and I just put, like gummies, like a little bow I got like on top of a gift, and like chocolate, Reese's, there's a lollipop tucked in here, um, Laffy Taffy, just like, because I, I don't have a traditional bouquet, I'm doing clutches, but I did kind of still want to do, I'm not doing a toss, I'll explain, oh, hold on, I'll explain the rest real quick, um, I also made, this is, these, I should have gotten smaller ribbons, these are huge, but like, I made this little ribbon thing, and it's in a circle here. I'm going to put this basically around the bouquet. So just kind of, it'll look nicer. Um, but basically shove this in and I'm going to unfurl these ribbons all around. I think there's about 14 ribbons. So everybody just kind of grabs a ribbon. And I'm going to have, either me or Jake is going to hold the bouquet. 
and the other person's gonna like snip the ribbons and whoever's holding the last ribbon attached to the bouquet they get the candy is how it's gonna go so yeah this took this was a pain in the butt to make it would have been a lot easier if I bought smaller ribbons but this is what these are the ribbons I found at the Goodwill I'm pretty sure they're Easter themed because they're all like but like mint green and purple are like two of our favorite colors so I was like well I'm just gonna roll with it whatever it's it's cheap so that's what I was going for <laughs> but yeah so we're not gonna have very many people be able to do it but I feel like whenever I see the bouquet toss like it's it's a struggle to get people on the floor so this will just be like, oh, only a certain amount of people need to grab a ribbon. And then, like, everybody else is not obligated. And I'm also probably going to play, like, I don't know, I want candy or, like, something like that. I don't really want to do, like, a single ladies thing. I want to be more, like, whoever wants to come can do it. And we're going to have some kids present. So I was like, well, maybe just the kids will do it. Or maybe, like, a couple of my friends will come out. And, and yeah. And then I will just give them a bouquet, whoever has, the long, like, the last ribbon standing, basically. So I just wanted to be a little more inclusive, even though I don't have enough ribbons to actually include everybody, like I was hoping. But you need to you need to cut these ribbons like very long. Like this, these are like three yard long ribbons because otherwise, otherwise everybody's standing like right next to you and that's awkward. <laughs> but Jake and Jake helped me measure it out, so that's what we have. If I end up finding smaller ribbons or more ribbons, if someone has some and then just gives me some, I could make a new one. But as it is, I'm happy with it. And I'm excited to see how that goes. And hopefully we can like set it up that morning or the day of so I'm not struggling with ribbons <laughs> right before it happens. I'd like it to be basically the first thing after um, the first dance and the parent dances. I just want to like go right into that so that's not hogging the dance floor. My boss also brought up like, oh, are you excited? It's like three weeks to the wedding. And internally I'm like, ah, because <laughs> I've been like... Just with some like life stuff that's been going on, I've just been kind of overwhelmed and so I've been not really wanting to do wedding planning, but it kind of pushed me to like get that done. I also got, I'll show you these two, I got some little wine corks. I put, I hot glued them together like at the bottom here and I put washi tape around it so you can't see the hot glue. Although I'm a little worried the washi tape's going to pop off because it's not the most strong holding thing. But I could either just re-tape it down with some regular tape like in the back where hopefully no one notices or I could like hot glue the actual tape to it. And these are for our table numbers. So it's gonna go in like that and be on our tables. So that's the plan for these. And Jake, we actually have like an old like thin board downstairs and Jake said he might try to cut it into smaller pieces and stick it on the bottom so that, cause you know, wine corks are pretty light. They might just like tip over the like, especially with like a big piece of paper on it, like a sail, it might just go, when someone walks past the table. So Jake's might do that so that we can like have it weighed down a bit. But yeah, that's one thing I worked on after my boss told me that because I was like, oh no, panic, panic finishing things up. I'd already started them sort of, but I just hadn't gotten around to finishing them. So now they're done. We also had in the last two weeks, we had our whole RSVP thing going on, which was a struggle. It's never fun <laughs> to figure out RSVPs. Um, it's, it led to some, like, some, like, oh, okay, and some, like, the, you know, there's, there's a couple of friends who, like, I figured they're out of state, I figured they wouldn't make it, but the fact they actually aren't gonna make it is sad, or I had to have, like, a conversation with, um, my grandma can't drive, and so my aunt was gonna bring her, my aunt, who also my godmother, was gonna bring her to the wedding, but they were really debating just not coming at all, because, um, they're, they're citing COVID, um, which, uh, some of my family doesn't really believe that's true. I'm I'm just gonna take them at their word for it. Um, but yeah, she's saying that they won't be coming to the reception. They're just gonna come to the ceremony, which is sad because I'd love my grandma to be there for the whole thing. Like you know, she's not getting any younger. <laughs> but and I know that my mom said too that when she talked to my grandma last before this conversation with my aunt that my grandma did plan to be for the whole thing, but. My aunt just made that decision, and so I'm glad they're at least coming to the ceremony. It just really stinks that she won't be there for the whole thing. And obviously, I'm happy to see, like, my I'm happy my aunt's coming, too. Um, no one else from my mom's side of the family is coming. <laughs> I have one other aunt and uncle from that side. I have, that, that side of the family is kind of big. And, yeah, they're just like, nope, we can't make the trip, which, you know, that's that's up to them. If they can't make it, that's fine. I think my mom's more upset about it than I am that they're not coming to represent because um, half the 
more than half of the people coming are my dad's side of the family. I don't think, I think maybe a few cousins from my dad's side can't make it, but other than that, everybody's coming. It's going to be a room full of that side of the family. <laughs> I think, I think they outnumber Jake's side of the family completely as well. So, oh boy. But, oh, I suppose like, so with RCPs, we had to chase down a bunch of people. Um, our actual like end date was a couple days ago. We still have one person, one of Jake's uncles, who says he's coming, but he hasn't officially RSVP'd, and we don't know if he's bringing a guest or not. So, like, we have two people that are up in the air, but everyone else either RSVP'd on their own, or we chased them down and they had to give, they gave us their yes or no. Obviously, like, it seemed like the majority of people who waited till the last minute were just no's and didn't want to say so. <laughs> like, they just sort of assumed that if they didn't say anything, that meant they were a no, but we wanted to know for sure, so we reached out to them and asked. And our guest list is a lot smaller than we were anticipating. We invited, I think we invited, this is including vendors, because I can't remember um, the actual, I think, because we have like five vendors. So I guess without vendors, we invited 230 four people specifically. I keep running up to like 240, but that's about what we had. Our venue, our, our price for the venue would included 250 guests. So we knew we were already like 10 under. And our actual guest count, hold on, I wrote it down. Our actual guest count is 154. So that's like 100 people less than we expected. <laughs> Which honestly, I'm like, it's sad that some people aren't coming, but I'm actually kind of relieved that it's going to be, it's not, you know, it's not a small wedding by any means, but it's smaller than I anticipated, and that makes it feel more manageable. I'm still bummed about my grandma, I'm still bummed about some of my other friends who can't make it, and it's, you know, it's one of those things that's like, that's a bummer, but it makes a lot of things easier. Um, I think I've mentioned money-wise, our venue has a policy where, since, since it was like a flat price for 250 people, for every person who didn't come, we got, that basically goes, comes out to like 50 bucks per person. And for every person that doesn't come, we get $20 that we can use towards something at the venue. So we essentially have $2,000 back. And we were planning to spend extra, like we were spending, planning to put 1500 towards wine and like beer for the open bar. But now we don't even have to pay the extra. We can just take that 2000 and do that. And it'll probably cover a late night snack too. And it's not, it's kind of nice. It's nice to have that back. Like, not that I'm saying, oh, I'm so glad people didn't come because now we have extra money, but like, it's a perk. <laughs> so that's great. And, and Jake too pointed out, like, that's kind of flawed logic. Cause that's just assuming that like the venue and the DJ and the cake and like all that stuff. Like he, it's, he's like, that's like assuming that it was $50 per plate of food. Like when I do the math like that, and that's fair, but it's also easier for me to like imagine those numbers I don't want to do the actual math and be like okay well the venue was worth this much and this was worth this much you know um and yeah honestly like even if we like technically are like losing money I I feel like it was worth the price especially since the prices got hiked up by like five thousand dollars between when we booked and now honestly now they might even be higher so it doesn't feel like we're losing anything and that's like a great bonus and I'm glad that they allow us to do that trying to like come up with the positives, you know? And it'll be easier to talk to everybody at the wedding with 150 people versus like 250 people. So there are, there are a lot of like good bonuses to that. So I'm trying not to dwell on the like, oh, they're not gonna make it part of it. Let's see, another thing we did. So <laughs> we haven't figured out our mini moon yet. We were, we were sort of debating like, oh, should we just like scrap it and then go back up to Thunder Bay and finish out the trip that we had cut short. But then we finally looked into it and the place Jake wanted to go in Thunder Bay, it's called um, Sleeping Giant Provincial Park. And he wanted to go to like an outlook there. But apparently it's like a five mile hike to get to like the top of this like mountain or scenic outlook. I'm not sure. And he says like it's five miles. And he's like, that could be walking or like mountain biking, which we don't have mountain bikes. We just have regular bikes. And then we had to do five miles back. And it's very different because most of our trips, well, we do hiking. Like we do hike, but it's usually not long hikes. It's maybe like you know, like a mile or two miles, and then we like come back or like around, we do that much. But we we haven't done like a five mile there and back since uh, Jake proposed to me. <laughs> and that was that was kind of rough. Like, and that took, you know, a whole day. And this kind of terrain, it sounds like is even more, 
I honestly don't know if this train would be as bad as where we went in Colorado because the train's gonna be very different. Because like who knows this might just be like muddy paths or something. We, we have no idea. And so and that was one of the main places and also I want to pronounce this wrong. I think it's Weemit Canyon. He wanted to go there too and that was that was our big draw. That's what we really wanted to see and then Thunder Bay was his second one. But he's like well Thunder Bay sounds like a pain in the butt and I don't want to drive all the way up just to go to this one place so we'll just skip it. But then we spent so much time talking about that trip that we ended up not like scrapping that we didn't actually talk about like the mini moon we'd already planned. <laughs> so now we still need to figure that out and hopefully it's fine because we've only got like like I said we got three weeks and we don't have any hotels booked or anything. <laughs> But he still also wants to talk to um, a family friend, like, of his mom. She grew up in that area, like, because we were thinking Chicago, and she grew up in the Chicago area. So he wants to call her and ask her for rec... rec I keep saying request Recommendations for things to do there, or, like, where we should go. Because Jake doesn't want to drive in Chicago. He'd rather just, like, park on the outskirts and take, like, the L or, like, Ubers or something to get further into town. So he just wants her insight on that. But then he's like procrastinating on calling her, so then it procrastinates the whole trip. So we're working on it, I guess, is the long and short of it, even though we've been working on it for a while. What else? I got my COVID booster, which totally kicked my butt. Every time it kicks my butt. I got, originally I got the J&J &J booster, and this was before, like, they found out about the, like, thrombosis or whatever it is that affects people who are, like, 30 to 49 women. And I'm like, oh, cool, that's me. But I didn't get anything, so that was fine. Um, but so I got that, and then I got the Moderna booster, like, last November, and now I just got the, like, bi bivalent? The new, the newest booster. I don't think they do even the old booster anymore. The one that has, like, the new variants in it. Which is cool, because now, like, because I think it's supposed to be, like, effective, like, two weeks after you get it, so it'll be effective, like, before my wedding, and hopefully that improves our chances for our other friend's wedding, of us not catching it at our wedding, and so we can go to theirs, um, is our hope. Because Jake got it like two days before I did. Because he just got the Pfizer one and that was easier to find for some reason than Moderna. Even though like a friend of ours who's a pharmacist said like, oh, I could have just, um, what I could have what Jake calls like doing COVID bingo. Where I <laughs> have every, every kind of shot there is here. But um, I just w would rather have the one that I'd already had. But then, oh yeah, yesterday. So it kind of kicked my butt and then that was Friday and yesterday was Saturday. And I had a wedding shower, a bridal shower, that um, Jake's sister threw for me. And I, luckily I took an ibuprofen before the shower, so I was fine during the shower, but after the shower I kind of felt like poop again. <laughs> and this morning I woke up and all the aches and pains were gone, except for like if I press on my arm it hurts, but you know, for the most part I'm good. So I'm glad, because I was originally going to get it on Thursday, but like their machines were down or something they couldn't do the paperwork so they, they had to turn me away but i'm like thank goodness because i would not have wanted to work on friday and i would have like called in or something feeling like that but um i guess to go back to the actual the bridal shower so their theme was bride to be with little bees all over the place it was very cute they brought me a little like or they gave me a little like metal bee and we have that on a shelf downstairs and it was, it's, it's basically because we're doing like our bee's knees drink. That was kind of where they got the theme, which is very cute. His sister made a charcuterie board and like a bunch of vegetables and fruit platters and lemonade, which I freaking love the lemonade. <laughs> and I ate so many strawberries. And yeah, it was like really good. And also got nothing bun cake, which is delicious. If you've never had nothing bun cake, go and get it. The first time I had it was at one of Jake's cousin's weddings. And I'm just like, wow, this should be all over the place and they opened one up in a town near us and I started going there all the time. It hadn't been for a while, so I was very happy to have it. And it was a it was a smaller shower. The, the reason they, they wanted to throw me their own shower for their side was because they knew like my bridal shower for my, fam my family side was gonna be huge. <laughs> so I think they wanted something more intimate, which is totally fair. And it ended up being they, they they said Jake couldn't come, so I felt a little awkward. So I was like, I don't I don't know some of these people. <laughs> I'm here without Jake, and it's his side of the family. But it was fine. Um, so my mom and my sister came. I those were the only two people I asked them to invite because my sister is my maid of honor, and my mom is my mom. And that was just because I didn't feel like it was fair to have the whole bridal party come to a second shower and like make that drive. And honestly, then we like my bridal party would have outnumbered the people there. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't want to do that. 
Um, and the people who were there were Jake's mom, his two sisters. And then it was mostly like one of his cousins came, or two of his cousins came, and one aunt. And then the other, I think the other th two guests, and there are two more guests and they were friends of his mom. And yeah, that's who came. So it was, it was very small and that was very fine. And it was a lot of like, I got a lot of coffee themed gifts. Like his mom got us like a grinder and like two bags of coffee and like mugs with our initials on them. We have so many mugs, but I'm like, I can't get rid of these. These are so cute. I got to keep them. And then his, another aunt or one of his aunts got me uh, like, a, we got a Mr. Coffee cause we watched a, uh, gosh, what's his, what's his name? There, there's a YouTuber who has t did a YouTube video about how Mr. Coffees are actually not bad. And we had gotten pour overs because we heard those were like an easy way to do it. But a Mr. Coffee is basically a pour over that you just like leave sit and you don't have to keep pouring water on it. So we're like, oh, that sounds a lot better than the pour over we were doing. So we'll just get like, you know, the, the easy pour over. <laughs> and yeah, it was and everything else like uh, his mom's two friends chipped in and they got me this like basket of like Japanese inspired like goodies. And there is a little like taiyaki like maker that you could put charcoal in and stuff oh it was it was kind of wild like it was funny because she told me she was going to go off registry because I met her a couple weeks ago at, at his mom's funeral or at his grandma's funeral and then she was talking about this like trying to like bring light to the situation and she's like I'm gonna go off registry and I was like okay and that made me nervous but what she gave me was really great and we did like we did one game where it was a it was basically just like a dating idea game she just gave everybody a card and they just wrote down like a date idea and then they gave them all to me and I read them out and like, yeah, every card I read, basically people got a gift. It was cute. And it was like, it was a game that like wasn't really a game, but it kind of got everybody to like, you know, figure out a thought or share an idea. One of the ideas was something that Jake and I had thought of already, actually, because our anniversary is the weekend before our actual wedding. Something we came up with was to each of us picks a thing to do and then we just do it. I know Jake hasn't decided yet. I know I really want to do high tea because I've been trying to do high tea for ages, but like either it's like too expensive or like it's too far away or just like we plan it during a trip, but then it just like falls through for some reason. So I've just never gotten to have high tea. Like the closest I got was when I went to a butler cafe in Japan, but that was with like friends of mine. It wasn't with Jake. I'm really excited to do that. I don't know what Jake's going to pick yet though. He still needs to think about that. But I know with all this other stuff, I think he's, he's feeling a little overwhelmed just like I am. So I don't think he's thought about it yet. And yeah, that was one of the dating ideas that his cousin gave us. And I was like, this is amazing. I love this. So yeah, it was a chill time and I liked it. We also, oh, we had a meeting with our photographer on Friday and it was, I was actually very surprised. So like I'd sent them, they asked us to fill out some forms online. Like, oh, who are your vendors? Like, what's your timeline? What photos do you want? Kind of thing. So they had us fill out all these forms. It was, we only needed to do it like two weeks in advance, but I think I did it like I don't know, a month and a half in advance, just because I already had all the information. And we were going over the timeline together. And I think we only made like two switches where he was just like, oh yeah, you need to make sure this is done earlier. And like, oh, we should move this to later. And that was it. Those are the only changes we made. And I was like, yay, all of my obsessive like video watching and Reddit stalking and all this stuff like about how to make a timeline has really <laughs> worked out because we didn't really have to change anything at all. And I was, I was concerned about it because we only have our photographer for seven hours. So I was like, well, we'll be able to fit all this in. And he didn't seem concerned at all. To be fair, he's, he's not our actual photographer. He's the guy who owns the company, but he's the one who makes all these calls. So he would know if it's not enough time, right? So I think he knows what a standard wedding timeline looks like. And he said it was good. And I was like, yay, perfect. That's great. And we also um, put out an authorization to like, pay for an extra hour if we need to just so like the photographer is aware of it because we're not sure if our, we're not sure if our dances will be done at we have a photographer from like 12 30 to 7 30 that's our timeline but we're a little worried that if things run behind like we really want pictures of our first dance and our parent dances so we authorize an extra hour in case those get pushed back for any reason so that we have pictures of those and yeah, and then we just got to make sure we bring like the extra money to the place and we plan to do that anyway, because we still need to figure out tips and put those in envelopes and give those to somebody to hand out to people and all that stuff. So that's another thing on our list that we haven't done yet, but we're working on it. And the other thing we're still working on is the seating chart, which, oh my goodness, Jake 
is amazing. So I just kind of made, like, I took the list of all the people who were still coming, like, of the people that we had, and I was just kind of making an Excel document, like, putting people under stuff and, like, shifting, like, copy-pasting people around if they didn't fit at a certain table, because you can only do eight at the table. Another cool thing about, like, not having as many people as we thought is that I made enough centerpieces for 28 tables, but I think we're only going to need, like, 19, like, 18, 19, 20 tables. So it's kind of nice because if anything happens with one of our centerpieces, we're going to have all these extras so we can just throw a new one on a table and it won't be a big deal. So I don't have to worry about things like super going wrong or anything, which is neat because I'm like, oh, what if a fairy light burns out? What if like one of the flowers falls apart? What if something happens? And now I just don't have to worry about it. I'm just like, nope, we got extras. We got tons. We can do that. Sorry, I forgot what was my main point. What was my main point? Oh yeah, oh, seating charts. So anyway, so with I was making a table of stuff. And Jake, I'd, I'd kind of forgotten, but he'd made a little website uh, to it. You can put the boundaries of the space, which our venue coordinator had given us like a little like pre-made map of like our original guest count, how many tables. And so he made it so you could draw the boundaries, which we already had. And then we can add tables as many as we need or delete tables. Like we already had it set up with all the tables that she'd originally planned. But then like we put all the names in, so we just kind of draw, drag the Excel sheet into this template. And then we could just drag and drop names and move people wherever. And it's very, very handy, especially because tomorrow we're gonna have his parents come over because we've, we've set up the tables basically already of everybody we have. We basically have the seating chart done, but his mom and dad are gonna come over tomorrow and help us figure out who should go where because like, Jake thinks he knows where everybody should go, and like I don't really know some of these people. Like, or I'm sure I I know their face, but when it's just names on a paper, I can't visualize who they are. So I don't really know who should go where. And then it's difficult too because my family kind of trumps the whole space, and so I'm trying to keep some families have like eight people in them, so I'm trying to keep them all on one table, and not. Or if a family has like six people, I can only put like one couple there, and maybe that couple is like someone from Jake's side of the family who's there, but it's like, well, then they don't know anybody at the table because there's this family of six and these two people who don't know anybody. But it's like, well, who else will fit there? Because there's no one else in my family who's two people that aren't like with their family. And so we just need to discuss that with them. And then on Friday, we're going to visit my parents and then we'll do the same thing with them and try to figure it out as best as we can and like know who should go where. And I know it's just for dinner and people would probably deal with it because I think dinner will take hopefully no more than two hours and people can get up and mingle between like courses if they really want to they probably won't but um i'm hoping people can get through the meal at least if we do have to put them next to someone that like they're not like the best of friends with but the scene chart is basically done we just need parent approval <laughs> which is wild i can't believe it's done already and so i started working on place cards i haven't i only did them for the head table because the head table is not going to be on our seating chart at all and I just, I didn't really like, so I made, this is mine. Like, I'm just gonna put this on like my seat, like just on my plate. And like, I know my head table doesn't need them. They can sit wherever, but I'm just gonna put them down because I'm going to, I haven't decided where yet cause I still need to like pick a corner, but I'm gonna put like their meal choice on it still. And I'm probably just gonna do like, we're doing fish, chicken and a kid's meal. And I'm not sure like, should I put it like, should I pick a corner and then like, oh, this one's kids and this one's chicken and this one's fish. And then just like write the letter and then maybe like, maybe make it a bubble letter and then fill it with a different color to make it even easier to tell apart. Cause I was looking at the, the stickers and stuff, but I'm not a huge fan of them. I don't like really how they look. Um, and then color coding is sometimes hard. So I feel like I really just want to put the letter of the food, but I don't know where it's the easiest for the server to see. So I'm going to ask the venue coordinator before I actually put the symbols on there, but I am going to start writing everybody's name and I just want to wait until we have the, the seating chart sort of done so that I can group the cards like by table. So I know like I can just put them around in the circle. And yeah, I'm, I'm honestly surprised at how much we got done in the last two weeks. And there's honestly not much left to do. It's still, we still need to do some delegating and finish the seating chart, finish the place cards, but like, kind of crazy how little there is to do although I still feel like there's a butt ton I need to do 
and it's hard to like stop that train of thought. I feel like I'm gonna have a rough time when the wedding's over because I'm not gonna know what to do with myself. <laughs> but yeah, I'm really pleased with how this is going on. And it's just like, finish the table number stands, finish the place cards. I can't really think of anything else. Just, just a bunch of little things. So I'm stoked and trying to like keep a happy face through all this. And I think it's going to be a great time. I say keep a happy face like it's really hard. Like it's like I'm now more excited now that we have answers from people like the RSVPs. I'm just glad to like have everybody's answer because that was very stressful was to not know if people were coming. And then there's a lot of like my mom texting me like, oh, they're not going to go on the website, but these people aren't coming for this reason. These people aren't coming. So I had to do a lot of like filling it out myself from what my mom told me. So which is. Like, I get it because I know some people don't want to do computers and like, I know we mentioned the one person who hasn't RSVP'd but has said, they've they told Jake specifically that they're coming, but they haven't RSVP'd because I guess they're not great with computers, which I don't understand. They're like my parents' age, it's not like crazy. Like, those are people who should, you know, kind of know computers at this point. It's like my, I don't know, my grandparents did it. <laughs> but they just don't like computers. I knew I did have an aunt and uncle who didn't want to put their email into the system because they, they're like, oh, we get so much spam mail. So they told my mom who told me. But, you know, that's one of the things about only doing online RCPs is some people just won't want to do it. But I'm glad we were at least able to, like, my parent, my parents and Jake's parents were able to give us people's phone numbers so that we could just message them ourselves to try and get a direct response. So keep that in mind if you're doing only online RCPs that, yeah, we had to chase down, like, 90 people. There were a lot of people who did not RSVP. <laughs> so it wasn't it wasn't my favorite thing. I ended up sending out just like a mass like template sort of email just saying like, hey, we need to, um, the wedding date's approaching and we need to know your meal choice if you plan to be there. Cause that's really all we wanted the RSVPs for. I mean, we do need the yes and no, but like the main thing is we're having a plated meal. So we need to know what they want. Cause otherwise we don't know what to say for them. So it's like, hey, so if you like whatever meal you want, just let us know. You can you can text me back or you can go on the website at like this link with like this password and fill it in there. Um, we need our response like by it was basically like, yeah, I think it was like September 9th we put. So we got everything in and we should be able to tell our coordinator real soon. OK, I feel like I'm babbling on, but I just feel like so much has happened because it's been two weeks and I've been really bad about keeping up with these things. But I had a great day today, got everything figured out, having a good time currently, and I'm hoping I'm not super stressed in like the next video or something, and I hope everything's still going well. <laughs> and I hope your day is going well. I hope you have a good one. I'm gonna sign off on this one. Bye.